Okay, good afternoon everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome everybody. I'm John O'Brennan from Maynooth University and it's a pleasure to be able to chair uh, today's talk. Uh, in a moment I'll introduce the Minister, but if I could s just begin with some uh, housekeeping. Um, just to remind everybody that you should turn off your mobile phones or at least switch them to silent. Uh, you are encouraged to tweet uh, during the event. Um, it is, however, an event that's being held under Chatham House rules. Uh, and I'd also like to refer everybody to the fire escape, which is over here uh, to my left. Uh, now, this afternoon, it's a pleasure to welcome the Romanian Minister for European Affairs, Victor Negrescu. Uh, Victor is a member of the Social Democratic Party of Romania. He uh, served previously as a before uh, he had a career as a digital entrepreneur and then uh, was elected to the European Parliament for uh, the PSD in 2014. He served for uh, three years before being appointed to his current position as the Romanian Minister Delegate for uh, uh, European Affairs. Uh, it is the latest event that we've held uh, on the future of Europe and the Institute has been particularly keen to uh, welcome our visitors from uh, different parts of Europe. But in recent weeks, uh, we've welcomed, for example, the Bulgarian Minister for European Affairs during the Bulgarian presidency. Romania, of course, will take up the presidency of the European Union Council on the 1st of January next year. And for those who may be interested, actually, the Romanian presidency has already produced a very wonderful website, one of the best that I've actually seen uh, thus far, and a really interesting logo with the wolf uh, representing the European Union and Romanian EU relations. Maybe the minister would say more about that. Um, okay, the opening presentation is going to be on the record. The minister will speak for 20 to 25 minutes or so, and then uh, he'll take questions, uh, which will be under Chatham House. So with that, it's a great pleasure to, me to welcome Minister Negresco. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go there. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I would like to thank the organizers for, uh, for, uh, for having this conference today and this discussion today about, about uh, the future of the European Union and also about the upcoming presidency that Romania is going to have of the European Union Council. And uh, I'm here today, of course, to speak about uh, those two elements uh, by starting to, to, uh, our discussion today on an open reflection on, on the need to discuss about the future of the European Union. And in this reality, uh, in this fact, of course, there are different things that are being laid down on the table when it comes to the reflection on the future of, of the European Union. And there are discussion about possible divisions between East-West, North-South. There are discussion about having a one-speed Europe or a several-speed Europe. There are discussion about having more social policies or less social uh, initiatives at European level. There are discussion about security uh, policies or the need to, uh, to focus more on NATO cooperation. So a lot of things laid down on the table today that will imply for us to give an answer. And in this regard, of course, uh, Romania is trying to have a constructive and positive contribution to this debate by presenting its own point of view, but why, but in the same time, listening to the different positions of the different member states while at the same time preparing for the upcoming presidency. Because we know quite well that our presidency is going to be uh, done uh, at a key moment. Uh, we are going to have the presidency, of course, uh, at the end of the mandate of the current commission and the current European Parliament. We are going to have the presidency when Brexit probably is going to happen. We are going to have the presidency when we'll have the conclusions of the consultations about the future of Europe. Uh, we are going to have the, con the presidency during the debates about the next multiannual financial framework. So uh, a, a lot of key moments during our presidency that implies, of course, to, for us to understand that the responsibility that is in front of us, the need for us to be really prepared for this presidency that is not only a Romanian presidency, it will be for sure and has to be a European presidency, knowing the context that uh, when it is going to take place. So our message generally is that we have to go beyond divisions in trying to identify those elements that are 
uh, that unite us, those elements that bring us together, those elements that, of course, represent arguments for us to, to, to continue working together at European level. And uh, when uh, discussing about this need of uh, creating bridges, bridges between East, West, North, South, uh, bridges of communication, we identify uh, uh, an element that seems to be common for everyone, common from member states, but also common for governments. They need to be accountable in front of citizens. They need to identify those elements, those policies that bring benefits uh, to citizens in their daily lives. And of course, in the same time, bringing Europe closer to its citizens, because again, like I said earlier, we have to be accountable in front of them. And uh, uh, in, this real, in this fact, of course, starting from this fact, uh, it's key for us to, to, to involve them all the way. Uh, the public consultation, the citizens' consultations that are being conducted across Europe can uh, represent the first step in this regard in order, of course, to, 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 to bring um, EU citizens closer to the European decision-making process and uh, in the same time promoting what the European Union uh, is doing for them and what is the added value of this common project. And in this regard, of course, um, we are trying to prepare and we have done a lot in the last couple of months to prepare for our presidency. It will be our first presidency. Uh, and uh, of course, we decided to orientate our presidency towards citizens. So we would uh, present our presidency as being a citizen-centered uh, presidency because we want to put on the table of the discussion uh, those topics of common interest that uh, are of, uh, bring benefits in the daily lives of people, in order to increase the legitimacy of the European project, the relevance of the European project, and also uh, stimulate dialogue and stimulate uh, basically a conversation between member states, a conversation, an active uh, dialogue, an active conversation about, 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 the, European, uh, about the European Union. Because uh, like we said, like I said earlier, we have the presidency uh, at a key moment. And during our presidency, we'll have the European elections. We are going to celebrate the 40th anniversary since the first direct elections for the European Parliament. And we have to remind people that uh, European democracy wasn't uh, built easily, but also that the European democracy exists uh, if they take advantage of the opportunities that are available for them, like, for instance, simply attending the European elections and participating and voting for whoever they believe should, uh, should lead the European Union. So, uh, indeed, taking advantage of, of that context is important, of course, to, uh, to um, bring uh, the European project closer to the local level and involving local authorities, uh, local communities, also absolutely key in, in, in uh, increasing the support for, for this common project. Uh, Romania, of course, um, uh, is lucky enough to, to, to have a population that supports highly the European project. Close to 80% of our citizens support the European project. So therefore, we believe our message uh, uh, could be delivered at European level using the momentum of the presidency, but also using the momentum of the debates about, about the future of, uh, of, of the European Union. And um, we are not only speaking about that. We, are also want, we also want to show that we are doing things about, uh, re, uh, about that, about involving uh, stakeholders uh, uh, when it comes to defining the future of the European Union. So, for instance, our, uh, our uh, presidency priorities that have been already defined have, been, uh, have resulted from, uh, from a list of uh, consultations, uh, thematic consultations that have been conducted uh, uh, in a very intensive way, we had about 500 uh, stakeholders participating, working actually in building those priorities. So not conferences, but really working groups, uh, working with the relevant stakeholders, having debates, having sessions to really build our priorities. Because if we want to speak about, uh, uh, you know, a more citizens oriented uh, European Union, we have to show that this is possible and we have already made the first initial steps in this direction. Of course, we are participating to, uh, to the public uh, consultation, the citizens' consultation format. We are one of the biggest, I think, promoters of this model. This is a picture from, uh, from, for the, fir from the first consultation that we did on the, uh, on the 9th of May. You know, uh, uh, about 400 people attended uh, that, uh, that meeting. And we tend to do uh, our consultations a little bit different. 
So we actually do polls, real-time polls, with the people attending those meetings. We involve them all the way, so they can come up with their proposals, they, they can use their mobile phones to come up with their inputs. So we, we try to make things uh, as interactive as possible, listening to everyone, uh, not giving lessons to anyone, this is absolutely necessary, but really trying to, to find the, the best way for us to, uh, to channel in the point of view of, of, of the citizens. And we extended this format. We also org uh, launched a new format called Speaking About Europe. Uh, it's a format that we employ in, in smaller communities, in villages, in smaller towns. We organize uh, small focus groups with people from, uh, from different, uh, with different social backgrounds, uh, gender balance focus groups and um, with people from different generations speaking with them about Europe and we notice that they are really excited about this project but also want uh, their voice to be heard better at, uh, at European level. So um, uh, you are to a certain extent in the north uh, western side of Europe. We are, uh, we represent the uh, eastern border of the European Union and uh, you know to a certain extent for us uh, Brussels uh, is quite far, like it is to a certain extent for you as, as well here in Ireland. And, uh, and uh, it's important to, to make sure that our people uh, feel involved and part of the process. This is why we have decided for our presidency to organize uh, events around the country. So we are going to have the summit in Sibiu, the ministerial meeting in, in Bucharest. But in every county, we are going to organize at least one meeting because we want people to feel part of Europe and that Europe can be everywhere, of course, no matter where people live, uh, in smaller or bigger communities, uh, uh, closer or farther away from Brussels, people should be part of the process and should feel part of the process uh, at, European, uh, at European level. So, of course, um, the momentum of the presidency is key for us uh, to try to, to do more at European level. After Brexit, our country will become the sixth biggest country in terms of waste in the decision-making process at European level. And this implies for us a, a bigger responsibility. And really, we see it as a responsibility. A responsibility to participate more at the European decision-making process, uh, listening more to, to, to our friends from different member states, uh, trying to generate consensus. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, it's been already 11 years since we integrated the European Union. Romania is not a new member state anymore. It's a long, standing member state of the European Union, and this implies for us uh, uh, taking responsibility. So we, are going to, we, are, we have 32 seats in the European Parliament, we are going to have 33 seats in the European Parliament. This is also important for you to know, just to understand to which extent we, we, we can have a positive and active contribution to the decision-making process. Romania is lucky enough to not have any extremist left-wing or right-wing parties in the Romanian Parliament nor in the European Parliament. So this is also something uh, that needs to be stressed out. So I said um, that we defined our list of priorities with, with citizens and stakeholders. Uh, these are our four uh, uh, pillars. Uh, so we are going to have focus a lot on citizens and a lot of cohesion on cohesion. I'm going to say a couple of words about that. But we have four pillars. The first pillar, uh, first pillar is economic and social pillar. We are going to speak about growth. Uh, R Romania had last year uh, a 7% economic growth. This year we expect, again, about 5 <laughs> to 6% uh, economic growth. So Romania and Ireland are the two fastest growing uh, economies in Europe. And maybe we can speak together about growth. Mm -hmm. So it's an invitation that I'm launching you all uh, and about our models and what we should do more at European level, but also about development, also about convergence, cohesion, reducing the gaps, uh, but also about the competitiveness of, uh, of the European Union uh, and our businesses in the world. I, we believe this is a key element, but also about connectivity, connectivity between north-south, east-west, uh, digital connectivity, but also infrastructure connectivity, uh, getting access better to, uh, from one country to another. I think this is also absolutely key. And also we are going to speak here about macro regions, reviving macro regions as a model of, of regional development uh, in, in the European Union, uh, of course, Romania uh, is part of the Danube macro region, and we want to use this momentum also about to speak to speak about that strategy and also about about the Black Sea. The second pillar is uh, is uh, about a safer Europe, a Europe of safety, a Europe of security, 
Uh, the Austrian presidency is speaking highly about that. We are going to also speak about that. Actually, this came up of the consultation that we've done with citizens. We are going to speak about the reform of the Schengen area, uh, hopefully with Romania in Schengen. Uh, we are going to speak about uh, border management, but we are going to speak also about uh, working more together. We notice that uh, unfortunately member states are not exchanging enough with each other. And we have a couple of proposals regarding this fact that we want to put on the table of, uh, of the European Union Council. Um, and we are going to speak about cybersecurity. Um, Romania, uh, I think, uh, has uh, a lot of experts in cybersecurity. And we would like for us to cooperate more in this field at European level. Um, this idea launched by the Commission to have a stronger agency in this field is also something that is, uh, is quite important, but just exchanging with each other. And uh, the example that I always give is the wanna cry attack that we had a couple of years back. Uh, some countries had the solution, some countries didn't have the solution, but we didn't have a format of cooperation, of exchanging information about how to handle that, that virus. And the solution came in from a, from a young person, a young IT person of 23-year-old that just put online the solution to, for everyone. But we could have found the solution together. So we believe that we should find better means for us to cooperate. We are going to speak about um, the, the global uh, action of the European Union uh, the defense policy, Romania is, uh, is uh, uh, actively participating to the common security and defense policy, but also speaking about the defense, uh, defense fund, keeping up to our commitments and our promises, but also speaking about our neighborhood, uh, supporting the European paths of Western Balkan countries. So probably the negotiations for the accession of uh, Mas Northern Macedonia and Albania in the European Union will start in June next year. This is at least what has been decided in the last General Affairs Council. So this will mean during our presidency. But also we are going to speak about Eastern Partnership, uh, Georgia, Ukraine, and especially about the Republic of Moldova and how we can be present there, how we can actually uh, deliver our message all together about, uh, about um, about the European Union and why they should still continue pursuing this goal of, of being part of the European, of the European Union and uh, in the same time uh, applying, uh, applying the, European, uh, the European model. So it's important for, them, for us to be present there and we are going to speak about they need to do, to do more in, uh, in a certain extent. Also, we are very much committed in speaking about, uh, speaking about common values, European common values. There are a lot of discussions about that uh, but we believe at some point we really need to discuss together about that. So we are going to discuss hopefully together about that. We, we, this doesn't imply that we reach a compromise, but simply having a conversation, having a discussion is, is necessary today. And also we are going to speak about a lot of elements, fighting against hate speech, uh, uh, speaking about tolerance, speaking about equal opportunities, uh, gender rights as well, but also about human dignity we want to revise this concept. This concept is mentioned in the European treaties in the beginning. It's mentioned in the, in the speeches of the founding fathers of the European Union, but we forgot to refer to it. So we want to speak about human dignity and what we mean by human dignity at European level and to which extent European policies deliver this element of human dignity. Of course, this will imply speaking about the social pillars, speaking about the European semester. This will imply speaking about the policies that have a direct positive impact on people and also economic policies. So a lot of issues to be raised. And of course, uh, if you I have any questions, I can give you more details on, on, on that. So on all those uh, four pillars, we have precise ideas, uh, recommendations uh, or suggestions. Um, so on our priorities, we have translated all our priorities in, in a common language. So we are translated all the legislative process uh, uh, in, in a language that is being easily understood by, uh, by non-experts in European policies, because we really believe that uh, today we need to be as clear as possible, as transparent as possible as what, about what is being done at European level and, uh, and, and what should, uh, should be done. So. Um, uh, I know you have a lot more experience than us in handling presidencies, but uh, nevertheless, I wanted to point out the fact that uh, everyone is committing in preparing this presidency, and uh, we try to be prepared actually six months in advance, because we are already acting as a shadow presidency during the Austrian presidency, even though we are not part of the same trio. 
Romania is part uh, of the trio with, with Finland and, and Croatia. We are the first of our trio, but already working on a lot of the files with, with the Austrians. We did that very well with the Estonians and the Bulgarians. Uh, we are part of the, of the, of the groups um, discussing the next multi-annual financial framework. Uh, already being part of the negotiation and uh, and uh, and, uh, and um, discussions uh, taking place on on on, the, on 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 that file. So, we are also actively preparing for the summit in Sibiu. Uh, uh, hopefully, you you, you could come uh, and and see Romania and also come for the summit. The summit probably will will discuss about uh, about uh, what could be the future of the European Union. We would love to have a declaration uh, mentioning a common positioning about, about the future of Europe, mentioning some of the conclusions of the consultations that have been conducted and expressing the position of the different member states. Um, it, it will be uh, hopefully a, a successful summit. We are doing everything that is in uh, our power to, to, to make it a, a success. It's going to be, of course, like you already know, it will, it's going to take place on the 9th of May 2019. So on the Europe stay, so therefore it's also a key moment. It's before the European elections, and hopefully the declaration there will, uh, will be uh, useful to, to define in the June Council, formal council that is going to take place in Brussels. Um, um, I, we believe that, we hope that the declaration will be also um, reflected in the, in the agenda of the leaders that is going to be adopted in, in June next year. So. Agenda of the Leaders, it's an important document, like you already know, and uh, we hope that the next Agenda of the Leader is going to take into consideration some of the elements mentioned in the declaration of, of the CBU, of the CBU uh, summit. So, uh, like I said, we try to involve uh, uh, as many people as possible in our presidency and, uh, and have a transparent process. So, the moderator spoke about about our logo, which looks, uh, let's say, like like a wolf. But uh, I think the story, the story is uh, is important. It's uh, the result of a competition. We had uh, about 300 young people participating in the, the competition. We had a jury of experts from all political groups, all political uh, feelings, and uh, experts in communication. But at the end, we had about 10,000 people voting for the logo. So it's a really a successful story because it was really a successful competition. And at the end, we have a 15-year-old uh, young man that uh, de designed this logo. Uh, he's, he's not uh, studying arts. He simply did that all alone, just not sleeping an, an entire night to, 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 to draft it. He has a very nice story. He's a, he's a bright uh, uh, scholar. He has, a, he has a brother that is studying in another European university and obtained a scholarship in another European university. Uh, he was raised in a family that took good care of him, uh, raised uh, by a single mother that did a great job in raising him. And I think his story is a story of for any young European today. And uh, I think this is a message that the voice of young people uh, should be heard, not simply speaking about young people, but actually giving them the chance to, to come up with their ideas. And uh, uh, we gave the chance to young uh, Romanians to come up with their idea, and they drafted this logo. And um, uh, Johan uh, simply wanted to illustrate a strong uh, Europe, a strong European Union, proud of its values. You know, the wolf is part of almost all European mythologies. But he also wanted to show that, uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the European Union supports uh, biodiversity and reiterate also uh, the, the importance that Romania is giving to uh, to uh, environment as a whole. So, I think uh, he he illustrated that just fine, and illustrating Europe, illustrating the European flag, illustrating the Romanian flag, and uh, trying to illustrate a, a, a strong European Union. Uh, we try to do the same also for the motto. So we involve um, uh, experts from uh, academia, uh, from uh, from the media, in in uh, in defining our motto. So our motto is cohesion a common European value, um, and we mean by that two things. Through cohesion, we understand the unity of the European family, us working together, respecting each other, not having double standards, uh, not having second-rank citizens. It's key for us to discuss, frankly, about that. But also, it's about a social, economic, and territorial convergence. Uh, this is mentioned in the European treaties for a couple of years already. 
And uh, it's important to remind everyone that uh, convergence is key and reducing gaps is also key for, for a strong European Union. And um, I'm happy that I'm speaking about that here in Ireland. Uh, I don't know how you perceive what you have done, but for us in our region, Ireland is a model and it's a successful story. And uh, to a certain extent, it's a story that uh, Romania is trying to copy, while at the same time improving what can be do done better. And to a certain extent, we believe that the Ireland and Romania could find solutions to, 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 to have an even better model in the, in the future of, of development and, uh, and growth. So um, uh, the way you employed European funds represents an example, a positive example. Uh, Romania would like to do the same. Uh, and I believe the entire region would like to do the same. And I think uh, Ireland could speak more about that, uh, more about that in our region as well. So uh, I'm glad that um, in the next couple of uh, weeks and months, there are different meetings that are going to take place uh, between our two governments. And I think uh, this can be, uh, why not, um, uh, a, a, positive, uh, a positive aspect of our future uh, bilateral relations. Because uh, uh, we look at the numbers, we notice that uh, our trade, the trade between Ireland and Romania has doubled in the last couple of years. We see that uh, Romanian citizens feel welcome here and they participate actively to, and positively to the local communities. I think all those Irish companies that are more and more present in Romania also have a positive impact on the business environment in, in, our, in our country. So therefore, um, there are signs showing that we can do more together bilaterally, but probably more together at European level. So, uh, you can count on me in supporting uh, this, and I'm sure that the Romanian presidency could be a key moment in, uh, in, uh, in uh, fostering and developing our good bilateral relation. Thank you. Thank you.